Wow, thank you. Listen, as you remain standing, I want to pray. If we can, we're just going to honor God. Father, we honor you today. You said if we acknowledge you in all our ways, you'd lead and direct our path. So we acknowledge you in our lives today. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit who's our teacher, that he would teach each and every one of us. That it's not so important what I say, it's what you say about what's said to each one that's important. May we hear your voice clearly. May you speak to our hearts. Father, I pray for comfort and peace and encouragement in each one. We thank you, God that we can humbly come before you, the throne room of grace, where we may obtain your mercy in our time of need. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I, it's good to be back. Pastor Carl and I have been, uh, you've heard, as great friends for a long time. Um, and I, I want to thank Pastor Carl and Gloria for allowing me to come and be with you again. And, and, and just so you know, Pastor Carl's a great pastor. He, and I, I'm, I'm glad that he's doing, he's gone to Bogota doing what he's doing because really he's very good at that too. So um, he's probably one of the smartest, most studious guys I know. I'm not very studious. I just take stuff from him and preach it. No, I'm kidding you. But, um, but he's, you know, not only are Pastor Carl and Gloria just great pastors, but they're great people. And uh, I appreciate them. I, I've no, again, I've known them for a long time. And, and you just have a great leadership here, godly leadership. And I hope you're very, very grateful um, because it's important in this day that we have good godly leadership and you have it. So thank you, Pastor Gloria, for allowing me to come and, and in your husband's place. And, um, but anyway, it's great church. And I love your new sanctuary. Do you guys like it? Yeah, it's, this is beautiful. It's awesome. The worship's so incredible. This is really a great place to be a part of. But listen, I'm going to teach a message that I titled, Faith That Never Quits. And what we're going to do is talk about how great God is. And, and my hope and my prayer is that if you need comfort today, that he'll comfort you. If you need encouragement, you'll be encouraged. If you need healed, there'll be healing. And, and, and sometimes we just need more knowledge. And, and the Bible says we perish for lack of knowledge. And, and, and I'm believing that God's going to give you all the knowledge you need for whatever you're dealing with so you can overcome it and, and work through it. So here we go. In Hebrews 11, verse 6, the Bible teaches us, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. See, that's what we have to believe. It's not an option. He said we must believe that. And it's impossible to please Him without faith. We need faith. We need faith active. We need it working in our lives. We need to learn to believe God. We need to develop this thing, this measure of faith that God give us and, and gave us. And so the more we understand of the Word, the more you understand of God, the more you read the Bible, that's how faith comes. Faith can't come from any place else other than the Word of God. And that's why it's important we believe this is the Word of God, the infallible Word of God. That there, there's, It's not optional. But he says not only is it impossible to preach without faith, he says those who come to him, those of us who come to him, must believe, must believe that he is a rewarder or rewards those who either diligently or sincerely seek him. If you're a seeker of God, if you're seeking him, you're trying to get to know him, learning, then you must believe that he rewards those who do such things. Because today in our society, we need, we need the word of God more than ever. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why is that important? Because unlike human leaders, God will never change. We live with people who change their minds, we, people who change their, you know, don't keep their word, don't, don't, they, don't, they don't keep their promises, and they can change on a whim. But we ought to thank God that God never changes. And how do we know he never changes? Because this word will never change. See, that's the thing that gives me confidence and peace that I know tomorrow I'm not going to wake up and God's going to say, I don't like you. He's going to look at me and say, dude, you, you blew it. You messed up, dude. You're out. Or that he doesn't love me or care about me or he's angry with me. See, that's why we need to know this word because sometimes we mess up and we feel like God's mad or he's angry, but he's not. He's long-suffering. That means he doesn't, he's not, he's slow to anger. He doesn't, he's very patient with us. How many of y'all are glad he's patient with us? I, I am. And so, and so 
it's important that we believe this is the word of God. This settles every discussion, every argument. Everything that happens in life that we discuss, is this right or is this wrong? We go back to the word and say, what does God's word say about it? And if we believe it, it settles the issue. But so often today, people kind of ignore this, and, and we, we, we live in the culture, and the culture is constantly changing. How many of y'all know what that, the, the const, it's constantly changing, what's right and what's wrong. The Bible says that, that in the last days, people will call good evil and evil good. We're seeing it in our day. And that's why we need to understand we live, we, we serve an unchanging God, that we have his word and it's never going to change, not, not yesterday, today, or forever. It's always going to be constant. And so Christ has been and will be the same forever. In a changing world, we can trust our unchanging Lord. And in this process, there are basically two types of faiths that believers have. One type of faith is faith that says, I believe, but never act or does anything with it. They, they say, but they don't do. So there's this faith that says, I believe. I don't know how many people, I, I believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in God. And I'm constantly asking, what God do you believe in? They say, what do you mean, what God? What God? Do you believe in the God of the Bible? And that becomes the issue. Well, I believe parts of the Bible. If you only believe parts of the Bible, it's not worth believing at all. Because it's, then it's not infallible. It's not the word of God because God never changes. So if only part of it's true, then why believe any of it? And what parts do we decide to believe in? It's like a smorgasbord. Anybody ever go to those? Buffet? You know, buffet, you go, I don't want that, I want that, I don't want that, I want that. And that's kind of how we do with the word of God. Well, I, you know, God, you know, he, he, he didn't know all this was going to happen. And so this is right now when it's not right. And that's why we have to have a foundation. We must believe that this is the word of God. And as a believer, we need to act. So when people say, I believe, well, what do you believe? Well, I believe in the church. Do you go to church? No, then you should be in church. Then you really don't believe in the church. Well, do you believe in Jesus? No, I don't really believe in Jesus. Then you're not believing in the same God I believe in. You're believing in a little G God, not the big G God. And see, that's important because a lot of people, you know, they say 80% of Americans believe in God. My question is, what God do they believe in? Because it doesn't look like we believe in God. So there's only one God. One, the first commandment, only one God. And so there's this faith that people have that they think it's faith that doesn't do anything. If it's not doing anything, if you're not doing anything with it, you don't have any faith. I knew, I knew that would go over well. Okay, so then there is this faith that is persistent, a faith that refuses to quit, never giving up. Real faith is more than just saying you have real faith or you believe. It's acting on God's word regardless, and this is big, regardless of what you see, how you feel, or how impossible any situation looks to you. Because we've been taught and trained in America to live by our feelings. It feels good, do it. Whatever you feel, how do you feel? How do you feel? And sometimes and, and with people, it's how they feel is greater than the word of God. Because I feel a lot of ways, but it never negates the word. The word is still true regardless of how I feel. We have to learn that the word of God supersedes all of our feelings and supersedes what we see. In Corinthians it says we walk by faith, not by sight. So often we walk by what we see. But we can't always see what God's doing. We can't always see how God's working. That's why he says you have to, believe, you have to live by faith, what you believe, not what you see. Because what you see is subject to change, but he is never subject to change. He's the subject changer. He changes the whole conversation. What you think is impossible, he says is possible. And so we have to have a faith that, that, that we believe God's word regardless of what you see, what you feel, or how impossible the situation looks. This kind of faith gets results. The first kind of faith gets you nothing. But it's your choice. You get to choose how you want to live and how you believe. People tell me all the time, don't tell me I don't believe in God. Okay. I won't, but you don't. <laughs> How can you know that? You don't know my heart. You're right. I don't know your heart. I don't need to know your heart, but I can see your actions. We don't even know our own heart. People constantly say, you don't know my heart. Well, okay, I agree. I don't. I don't even know my own heart. 
That's why he said you'll know them by their fruit. How do people know what we believe in? By what we do, not just by what you say. And so that's the faith we want. Mark eleven twenty two 22, verses in, uh, through verse 25, from the New Living Translation, what I'm reading from, the Bible says, Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen, and have no doubt in your heart. You know, I've had people say, I have faith to move mountains. I said, okay, come to Albuquerque. Because I'm surrounded by mountains. Let me see you move the sandias. I'm, I just, I just want to just go ahead. So it's not talking about literal mountains. I'm not talking about, okay, I can, I have great, I can move mountains. Because really, if you ask me, I don't have, I don't have enough faith to move an anthill. I mean, I can't say anthill move. But anyway, all right. But he goes on to say, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But when you pray, when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. So here's what Jesus is saying when he says about the mountain. Jesus uses this example to let us know that God can do the impossible. If you believe God can do it and not doubt in your heart, not give up, not quit, then he's saying, then I'll get it done. See, that's the thing. He's not talking about a literal mountain. He's talking about mountains in your life, things that we confront, things that we deal with. Then God begins, then, then we realize that God will answer your prayers or our prayers if we meet his conditions. Now, let me say this. The love of God is unconditional. He just gives us that. You, don't have to, you just have to be a person, alive, and God's love is bestowed on you. His love is unconditional, but every one of his promises after that is conditional. That means we have to meet a certain condition. We have to do something. Because a lot of times in Christianity, we won't do anything. But as believers, we have to do something. There's something you've got to do. There's a condition we have to meet. And so what are the conditions of this scripture I just read? Number one, you must be a believer. God hears the prayers of believers. The only thing he hears from an unbeliever is when they repent. And say, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Because they're not his children. They may be his creation, but they're not his children. The only children of God are those who believe that Jesus is Lord. And have given God permission to their life. So you must be a believer. The second thing is, you must not hold a grudge. Sometimes in our own natural personalities, we tend to be grudge holders. Anybody know any grudge holders? Yeah, so just our personalities tend to be like, I'm holding a grudge. You, they, they, you want to talk to somebody, they talk to you and you say, no, I'm holding a grudge against you. I, I, I'm not. So we have to learn to forgive. And forgiveness is something we need to understand because a lot of times I've heard it taught so many different thing, ways and as I've grown in the church and as I've been in the church. And forgiveness is, is letting, letting someone go from your life that, man, I forgive that person for whatever he did. It doesn't mean, or she did, it doesn't mean I have to like him again. It doesn't mean I have to be around them again. It doesn't mean I have to be their friend again. It's just like if you had an accountant that stole your money, you may forgive him for stealing, but hopefully you're not going to give him more money. And see, that's the difference between reconciliation and forgiveness. Reconciliation is when we reconcile our relationship. That I come and I repent, you come and you repent, and then we work to build the relationship again. Some of you in marriage do it a lot. Yeah, you're like, man, honey, we need to reconcile. Honey, I know I blow it. And then she, you know, you say you're sorry, and then you're looking at her like, are you going to say you're sorry? And she's like, I ain't saying nothing. You, you know. <laughs> but there's a difference. And so forgiveness is letting yourself off the hook. But you don't know what they did. What does it matter what they did? The Bible didn't give reasons. Well, if they do this, this, and this, you don't have to forgive them. It's for your benefit. Because faith acts. And you know what? We have to give forgiven faith. You have to allow God, you have to forgive yourself in faith sometimes too. Because sometimes it's easier to forgive other people, but it's, it's hard to forgive ourselves. And we need to forgive ourselves sometimes and say, God, I, 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 I just, I'm going to forgive myself for doing this or acting that way or saying that. I know I shouldn't have done it. And so forgiveness is huge so that God will forgive you. 
So we must not pray only for selfish motives either. Your request must be to help you advance the kingdom as well as what you desire for God to bless you with. You want to get right with God so you can advance the kingdom. You want to get comfort so you can help somebody else. It can't always be about us. Now, there's seasons when it's about us, when we're hurting and we're sad and we're broken and things have happened in our lives that just, just you know, meant to destroy our lives. But as soon as you get right and as soon as you get some peace and comfort, you should be, you should be exercising your faith to help some other people. That's what you do when you get to serve at, at Trinity here. You get to serve, that means you're helping somebody else. Well, what I do doesn't matter. What you do matters to somebody. If you're in the nurseries today taking care of people's babies, man, they're doing so much. They're praying over your children. They're praying over your babies. And, and, and those nursery workers are giving parents an opportunity to come in here to get stronger in their faith and stronger in the Lord so then they can take that child home and raise that child up in the way that he or she should go. That everything's important to God. You may minimize it, but God doesn't minimize it. And so your requests have to be not just only selfish, and, and, and the other thing is you, you need to pray effectively. You need to have uh, faith in God, not faith in the object of your request. And folks, that's huge. If you need healing today, don't have faith in healing. Have faith in the healer. If you need a job, don't have faith in getting a job. Have faith in the job giver. And see, we get our focus wrong. And that's where a lot of people get discouraged and, and disillusioned. Well, I prayed, I believe God, nothing happened. That's because you had your faith in the thing, that, the object, instead of the one who blesses. We got our focus wrong. So if you don't get the job you want, God's not, he's not done. He's not dead. He's, he's still there. But so many people put their faith in the thing that they want. And when they don't get the thing that they want, that's why they're discouraged. Because listen. The reality is God never let anybody down. You hear some people talk, God let me down. God didn't do that. God didn't do that. And then you wonder why other people don't want God. God let me down. No, he didn't. Why am I in this family? Why do I have a dad like this or a mom like that? God doesn't love me. Sure, he loves you. He loves you no matter where you're at or who you're with. We've got to pray for protection. We need to keep praying to him and believing him regardless of what we go through. I know it's not always easy. I know it's not always, it's not always fun. And I haven't had a life that's always been fun. One time I, I told the Lord this, I prayed, I said, God, this is no fun. And the thought that came to my brain was, when did I ever say it would be fun? And I went to the Bible, because that's our foundation. I can't find one scripture where he said, Steve, this is going to be fun. That's like joining the army. Who said it was going to be fun? They said it would be an adventure, but they didn't say the adventure would be fun. And a lot of times we think in Christianity that it's all about me and it's about, you know, my enjoyment, my happiness. God never said he'd make you happy either. He said he'd bless your life. And so we have to constantly have a focus and a belief on the Savior of the world, that God created the heavens and the earth not on the object or the thing that we're believing for. And can I say something else? Don't put time limits on your prayers. That's one of the most discouraging things for people. It's been the most discouraging thing for me when I say, God, this has got to happen now, and then it doesn't happen now. Then what? See, when you put time limits on your prayers, you're going to be so discouraged, you're going to miss what all God has for you. And can I say this too? I don't know why I'm saying all this. I, I keep saying, can I say it? I'm here, unless Pastor Carl calls and says, no, you can't, then I'm saying it. That, that when, when, we, when we're walking with God and believing him, sometimes things don't happen the way we want them to, what we're believing for. And can I tell you, I'm a, I'm, I'm a person who has been thankful God didn't answer some of my prayers. I'm so grateful. I'm like happy. Years ago, I was engaged to a, a woman, long time ago, to another woman, and I thought, oh, I got to have this woman. I got to have her. I, I proposed to her. She said yes, and one day, we didn't even fight. I didn't even get that opportunity. We didn't even argue. She just walked in and says, I can't marry you. I was brokenhearted. I blamed God, like, God, what's wrong? <laughs> and then as I look back on it, when I got my heart right in my mind, I'm like, thank God I didn't marry that woman. Thank God. 
I've never touched a woman in a bad way. I might have hit that woman. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but thank God I didn't marry that woman, right? Because when I got right and I started thinking right, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Thank God I married the woman I married. I'm so happy that God didn't answer that prayer. He says, Steve, like it or not, I'm going to take care of you because that's what you asked me to do. That is not good for you. And so I want that job. Maybe that job's not good for you. Some of you are like, I would never, I've never hit a woman I've never had. Because if I ever hit my wife, I know what she'd do. She'd kill me in my sleep. I know what she'd get me. I know what kind of woman she is. She said, that's okay, just do that. you got to go to sleep at some point. And then I'm beating you with that frying pan, whatever. But, but I'm saying that sometimes, and, and I say different things in different services, but for this one, I want to hit this point. Sometimes we got to believe that God is a reward of those that diligently seek him. And some of those things that don't happen, we have to believe. That sometimes God closes doors that no man can open, and he opens doors that no man can close. Do we believe in him or not? So if something doesn't work out, God, I still believe in you. I still believe you're right. Because there's been things that I've looked back and said, God, I'm glad you didn't hear that one. You didn't answer that one because that was a dumb prayer. Because I just didn't know any better. Is this okay? Is this working? Is is this helping somebody? Okay. So as we read through the Bible, you'll discover that there's uh, some consistent thoughts. Number one, God's great love and compassion toward us. That's one of the things you'll find. And the other one is that he's unchangeable. I am the Lord and I change not. And that's big for us. And when you believe this and see this, it will give us greater confidence that God not only hears our prayers, but that he will answer them. See, there's no greater motivation for faith than knowing these things. Number one, that God is absolutely for you. And number two, he wants you to be successful. He wants you to do well. And number three, that he has called you and ordained you to succeed in this life. If you'll believe that that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And if you'll have this faith that's active, that's aggressive. Listen to this. Faith, this faith we're talking about, denotes a force that is forward-directed and aggressive. Never passive or backward-reaching, but always reaching forward to obtain or achieve a specific target or goal. He says, have the God kind of faith. That's a faith that understands and believes that he is faithful. He is reliable. He is loyal. He's steadfast. God is dependable, constant, and unwavering. That's the God kind of faith that he never wavers. He's always there. Our our life or things may not happen the way we want, but I still believe that God is faithful. I still believe he's real. I still believe he's the healer, whether I get healed the way I want or not. Years ago, I went to Africa, and I hurt my elbow real bad, uh, you know, doing something real manly, like pulling my bag off the overhead thing. (laughs) Felt like a knife went through it. And so for the next six, seven months, it just got worse and worse, and I couldn't even hold a cup. I couldn't shake a hand. Went to the doctor. He said, oh, you need surgery. The whole time, I'm believing God to heal it. God, heal my elbow. It hurts. And you know what? I went to the doctor and he said, Steve, we're not even going to do an MRI. It was so bad. He said, we're just going to do surgery. He said, we can do one, but that's going to be a waste of both of our time. So I'm like, oh, man, God. You know, I could have been so discouraged. Like, God, why didn't you just heal my elbow? Why did this happen? Why did I pull it out? Those don't, you know what? Even if I got the answer, I mean, what if God said, Steve, the reason you hurt your elbow is because you're stupid? (laughs) I mean, how many of y'all would like that answer from God? Like, oh, okay. Sound like my wife now, Lord. I heard that before. <laughs> but think about it. I mean, I mean, what, what if we got all the answers? Steve, if you hadn't have jerked it out of there, you wouldn't hurt your elbow. Then I found out from the doctor who did my elbow that more people hurt their elbows by yanking bags off the conveyor belt than almost anything else. You know why? Because you're not loosened up. You're not warmed up. I mean, when we go to the conveyor belts at airport, airports, we should, be, we should loosen up like, okay. Because <laughs> you know those bags are heavy. And so we jerk on them, and he said, that's what happened. So, I mean, sometimes I don't want God to tell me why. And even through the surgery, because I had to have surgery, I believed that he's still the healer. And he used that doctor, and now my elbow's fine. It doesn't hurt. It's not sore. You know, listen, I don't, I don't really care how. I just want to know that it will. 
And so no matter what we go through, we can still believe God and exercise. Our, I believe God that, God that you would have that doctor, his hand would be steady. Because I don't want old shaky operating on my elbow. Like, I don't want to, like, oh, sorry, Steve, oops. I don't want oops when you're operating. I don't want, when you're cutting my hair, I don't want any oops either because I don't have much to cut. But if there's an oops, it could be a big deal. <laughs> Some of you that got lots of hair, the little oops just doesn't mess with you. But for me, that's a big deal. So, so we believe God no matter what we're going through. We don't get discouraged. We don't, we don't let our, our faith get weak. We stay strong because we know God's with us. And it turned out okay. It took a couple years, but it turned out okay. I had a few years. We keep believing God. We need to have this faith that never quits. So we can believe God for big and small things, for our everyday things, our whole lives. We just don't believe God for the big things. Some people say, well, my faith is working on the big things. If you haven't believed God for the little things, it'll never work for the big things. And we have to believe God. And, and can I say this? We need, to believe, we need to believe we believe in, in a big God. Some people say stuff like this. Here's what they say. Some will say, I know how God has bigger things to deal with than to deal with my stuff. Sounds so humble, doesn't it? But it's not smart. Or, or I, can, I can handle this. I don't need, I don't need to bother God because I can handle this. Or I don't want to ask for too much. Can I tell you something? Some of our asks aren't big enough. I mean, it's the only time you look at somebody and say, is my ask big enough? <laughs> How does my ask look today? You know, I'm, being, I'm enunciating this very well. Cuh. And some of us need to get our asks bigger. <laughs> because God's a big <laughs> I try not to laugh, but you, you'll never forget that. Next time your wife looks at you and says, how does my ask look? You say, honey, it's a big one. You, got, you, 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 you believe in a big God because we need to, <laughs> oh, man, I'm probably in trouble. Forgive me, Pastor Carl, please. But, but you need to believe God for big and small things. We need, the big things to you are big things to God, but, and the small things to you are big things to God. Some of us don't ask for enough. Well, I can't ask for that much and and why not how, I mean really if you think about it, let's do it in reverse how small is your God my God's getting bigger by the day I don't know how big your God is but my God's big and and he's not being overwhelmed like oh man too many people are praying to him seven billion people in the world and if every one of them got saved and prayed to him he could answer all their prayers at the same time my God is a big God really we're not going to ask him for too much but then he created the heavens and earth and we got stars and we got planets. And I always say this, believe God to get to the sun. And if you land on the moon, you've accomplished something. You've been somewhere. I mean, come on, man, we've been somewhere, done something. But to not believe him, believe him at all is not what he said because he said it's impossible for you to believe me without this faith. God is so great. It's impossible to believe him. It's impossible to please him without it. We have to learn to believe God and develop our faith. Not just for ourselves, but for others. Praying for people to be healed or strengthened or encouraged. I watched it up here this morning every service. I'm sure these people weren't praying with you that you came up prayer and said, Oh man, that's, that's a, yeah, that, you don't want to bother God with that. Just go back and sit down, you know. <laughs> you see all these other people bothering I mean, God's been, he's busy. You, you would be freaking out. You would walk away going, what just happened? You'd be broken hearted. And someone would say, what happened? Well, they told me I was bothering God. It was too big. And... <laughs> or you can handle that yourself. Don't, don't bother him. You know, you got it. You got it. Just, just take care of your business. See, God is bigger than all that. And can I say this? Also? I don't know why I keep saying, can I say something? Because <laughs> I'm going to say it. That, that, that there are times where you need things in your life that you have to believe God for. Because really, we don't, most of us don't need God, really. Think about it. Most of us have food. Most of us have clothes. I can see you're all clothed. Thank God. <laughs> most of us have a car. Most of us even have a phone. And you know what? The only thing we really need is food and shelter and clothing. That's what we need. Everything else is what we want. 
Because if my iPhone was lost or died today or if I could never have another one, I would still be able to live. I might be freaking out, but I would live. Right? So, so it, it's about, and, and there are things in our life that God keeps us humble at heart to keep believing him for. Because if, if, for a lot of us, if, if there weren't something going on or something, that we would never have to believe him for anything. I mean, we could go through our days and never believe him for one thing. I believe him for safety for my family each and every day. I have a prayer I pray every day over my family. I'm believing him to protect them, and I'm believing him that even my grandchildren will marry godly people, that my grandsons will marry godly girls, and my granddaughters will marry godly men. I'm already believing God for that, that they will have godly friends. There's always something that God puts in our life to believe him for. Why? Because that's the only way we can please him. So some of the things you say, well, I don't like dealing with that. You get an opportunity to believe God. And you know what? We can't forget his benefits. Let me, let me close with this. I'm going to read, if I can read from the Bible just for a moment. Psalms 103, starting in verse 1. And in verse 2, let me read it out of the King James because a lot of us know it that from that verse or that, that translation. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Sometimes to stay in faith and to keep believing God and stay encouraged, we need to remind ourselves of the benefits of God. Let me read. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins. How many of y'all are happy and grateful for that? He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagle. Now, as you get, if you're younger in here, you don't care about this one. But as you get my age, you're like grateful, like, thank God. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. i got to remind myself, and so do you, of the benefits. Slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sin. He does not deal harshly with me as I deserve. Make it personal. He does not punish me for all my sins. He does not deal harshly with me as I deserve. His unfailing love toward me, because I fear him, I reverence him. He has removed all my sins far from me, as far as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to me and to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him or reverence him. For he knows how weak I am, and he remembers I'm only dust. Our days on this earth, or my days on this earth, are like grass, like wildflowers. I bloom and I die. The wind blows and I, and we are gone, as though I had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever to me, as I reverentially fear him. Folks, sometimes we have to remind ourselves and we have to be reminded of the benefits of God in our life. That you may not have everything you want, not everything may be going your way. You may be hurt in here. You may be discouraged. You may be going through some pain in your life. But man, I'm telling you, the greatest thing for me is to know that when I die and my life is over, as he said, I get to go to heaven. That my children are healthy. Take everything I have away from me. But if my wife and children are healthy, I have so much. Because health we can't replace. Things and objects are replaceable. You and I both have to decide what kind of faith we have. But I pray you have the faith that never quits and constantly believes in this God that's more than enough. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here. I thank you for teaching us. I thank you for encouraging each one of us. No matter where we're at in life, because there's so many things, Father, that we go through. May you bless each one. May you encourage them like they've never been encouraged. May you inspire them to believe you, maybe even again, or continue to believe you. So, Father, bless each one in Jesus' name. Now, with every head bowed, listen. If you're here and you say, preacher, listen, I've walked with the Lord, but I've walked away. You're right. I allowed discouragement to overwhelm me. I felt left out. I really did feel like God let me down, but I realized through the Bible, He's never let me down. I'm letting myself down. 
and I've walked with him, but I've walked away. I want to come home. Would you just pray with me that I get it right today? Or if you're here and you say, preacher, would you pray with me? I'm ready to give God permission to my life. As we sang the song, I'm ready to finally surrender all. Because I just realized how good God is. He's a good God. He really is a good God. He's for me. So I want to I want to invite him into my life and give him permission to my life. If that's you in Jesus' name, here's all I'm going to ask you to do so I know if I'm praying for anybody and who I'm praying for. If you say, Pastor, would you include preacher, include me in your prayers. If that's you in Jesus' name, right where you're seated, would you just lift your hand up and you can put it down, but I want to see it. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, wow. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God, man, there's so many. God bless you guys. God bless you in the balcony. Wow, look at all the hands. God bless you guys. God loves you, and he's for you. Anybody else, just, God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God does care, and it's time that we give him our whole heart. Father, bless each one in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to ask if you lifted your hand to pray this prayer aloud with me right where you're seated. Pray it loud enough for your ears to hear your own voice, because the Bible says we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths. And if you're right with God in here, would you pray with us in support of them so no one's praying alone? And folks, let me tell you, there was, there was a lot of hands raised. So let's pray together. It's right out of the book of Romans. Would you pray, Father, I believe in Jesus, and I believe he's your son, and I believe he's Lord of all. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for saving me. Because I believe, I believe in you, and I surrender my life to your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, yeah, thank the Lord. Once again, I want to thank Pastor Carl and Gloria for having me. Thank you guys for listening. May God bless you. Have a great week.